The order went absolutely topsy-turvy down under for today's Australian Grand Prix as multiple safety cars and red flags made for an action-packed race. Welcome back to episode number 270 of the Grid Talk podcast today, and we're going to discuss the 2023 Australian Grand Prix. My name is George Harrison, and join me today, we have Grid Talk and Formula Talk co-host, Tom Downey. Hello. Good morning, sir. So... Uh, let, before we get into the race, it's sponsor time. Let's cover this. So, uh, Bet Online remains your number one source for all college basketball betting this season. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point from Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online. Updated odds for everything from live games, the conference championships, right through to the final tour and championship game. Bet Online is your college basketball headquarters this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive 50% off for your welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, Be sure to use our promo code BLEAV, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your first bonus, betonline.ag, where the game starts. And it absolutely kicked off today in Australia, Tom. We had so much going on in terms of that. I mean, I did mention we had two safe. I think we had two or three safety cars, two red flags. It was all going off. But in the end, you know, life has three certainties: death, taxes, and Max Verstappen winning in two thousand and twenty-three. Um, in the end, it, it was another victory for him. But it was anything but straightforward for him today. He had a few few threats along the way. Uh, yeah, I mean. You know, as as a Max fan, I've got to be honest, when we had the third and what felt like the 75th million um, standing restart, you know, he, uh, I had my heart in my mouth because, you know, the, the, the race start, you're absolutely mugged by George Russell, who got a better start and had the line in, into turn one. And, you know, just, you know, Max was too polite going into turn one, which is something I never thought I'd say about him. Um, and then, and then you know, got a bit lucky with obviously you know, subsequent safety car and red flag and you know, Russell pissing and obviously blowing up. Um, not in the way you wanted either. Um, and then, and then second time round, you know, even though he was on the, you could say the correct side of the track, because you know, a bit like Cota and stuff, turn two actually gives you a better run into, sorry, P2 gives you a better run into turn one. Um, yeah, just, Again, just struggled off the line compared to the compared to the Mercs. Um, ultimately, you know, once once he got into DRS, he was uh, he sailed past Hamilton, and, and I think even without DRS, he'd have been past him in in, in a handful of laps anyway. Because the Red Bull was just as soon as it fired its tire, the bump, it was just gone. And when he got past Hamilton, he was something like one point five seconds ahead by the end of the main straight. So. You know, the, the 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 race pace it, it took a little bit longer to get going but w- once it got going boy was it quick yeah that red bull is uh, is something else especially in the hands of max verstappen and his teammate sergio perez was pulling off a lot of overtakes during this race as well um like tom mentioned there we actually have three standing starts today because of the two red flags um max actually got overtaken by both mercedes off the first start the initial one um but yeah, um, with the restart, uh, Russell pitted and got out of the way effectively, and then Max just sailed past Hamilton, got uh, got a ten second or so lead, and yeah, it was a bit nervy for him on the restart because um, sorry, the second restart because Red Bull were struggling relative to the Mercedes to heat the tires up, as it turned out. But he he held on through that first corner, and we will get into the first corner melee on the third start um, eventually when we get into the guys who retired him. But yeah, let's. Um, Let's uh, let's go into next up. Who was, of course, Sir Lewis Hamilton, second place. Tom, um, great a great podium today for Mercedes, their first of the season. We might as well go into George Russell as well because he didn't finish the race. Of course, his engine blew up as you mentioned there. Um, very encouraging for Mercedes. I mean, had there not been uh, a red flag early on, they. I mean, I think Verstappen probably still would have won anyway. But he wasn't. You know, he wasn't really looking certain for it. Mercedes had some decent pace, especially at first. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mercedes were saying that oh, Red Bull, are, you know, a second up the road, and and you know, there's going to take a season to for, you know for them to catch up. Mate, it didn't even take one corner. Um, you know, and Red Bull was ahead 
so <laughs> you know so yeah boy that season went quick um but um but yeah no is it, it there is obviously still work to be done for Mercedes. You know, they're, um, uh, you know, Russell blowing up at uh, uh, first. You know, I, I thought perhaps it was a wondered if he if he had like an oil leak or a hydraulic leak or something because there there wasn't any obvious sound on his onboard when when, when his car went pop. But according to Mercedes, the IC just um, yeah just absolutely catapulted itself to, towards an early retirement. Um, you know, so uh, you know, so he he was running well. You know, he was he was looking fairly fairly solid um, up in up in front. You know, he, he looks he looked comfortable in P one, which bear in mind he's not in the quickest car on the grid, you know, but by any stretch. Um, you know, he, he looked you know he looked settled, he looked composed. We did hear a bit of a sort of frantic message from him um i think on about lap four or five or so just before the first red flag safety car incident um where you where you know i I believe his engineer was telling him to look after the tires and you save and all the rest of it and and he said oh hang on time shine i'm fighting off my teammate yeah what do you want from me um which is fair enough to be honest yeah you you know it's uh you know his teammates behind him in identical machinery with drs um, you, you know, he didn't. You know, he, he doesn't. He doesn't want to be vulnerable like that. Unfortunately, he's raced into a premature end. He tried to get in the pits, but because he was going so slowly, he strolled past him, and yeah, he uh, he conked out in probably the safest place he could. Um, the pit lane, pit lane was closed. Fortunately, Hamilton realised it this time, unlike 2020. Um, that's an Italy reference for you. Um, and then, yeah, uh, yeah. So his race came to a premature end, but Hamilton. Um, you, you give me saying that oh I you know I can't tell with the car you know I'm getting confidence blah blah blah. You didn't look like you were short of confidence today. You know those safety car re- uh, sorry not safety car restarts all the race starts we had whether it was the, the the race start itself or the standing restarts. He looked confident. You know twice he got past Hamilton. Uh, got past Hamilton. You know he's so clever he overtakes himself. Um, <laughs> got got past you know got past Max. Put a good move on him on the exit at turn three. But Max said, um, you know, he pushed me off. I'm a Max fan. He didn't push him off. Mm-hmm. Um, Max was ahead going into turn three, but you know, he, he took a little bit too much curb and Hamilton just had the grip going through. So you, you know, it was uh, it was just it was just a good day from him. And when he needed to, he was uh he was increasing and decreasing the gap to to Alonso. You know, there are a couple of sort of threats from Alonso, but I don't think Alonso even had DRS. Um, towards the latter stages, and Hamilton was just holding that gap in P two, doing exactly what he needed to do, and he he showed his worth. He showed why you know he's he's been you know, one of the races he has in the championships, what have you, and just yeah, a good Sunday. Still work to be done for them, but I think Mercedes can take a lot of encouragement aside from Russell's engine. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think Mercedes today were on a par with Aston Martin, which is the first time we can say that this season. Um, and I got a feel for George Russell as well, like you said. I mean, I, I personally think it would have been unlikely for him to win today, even if things, you know, r- the race was a lot more um, normal, <laughs> basically. A lot less incidents behind him happening. But I still think, uh, yeah, it, it would have been a chance for him at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, it, it's, encouraging, it's encouraging for them for sure. They'll uh, If they keep that up and things keep happening to Red, well, you know, things keep happening to both Red Bulls potentially, then... They could get a win this year, absolutely, just like last year. So we'll see how they go with that. Um, you gave a mention to Fernando Alonso there. He finished third, uh, P3 for the third time in a row, I believe, this season. So all the threes for him. And uh, and Lance Stroll today, fourth place. Um, he was in the wars a bit today. Uh, not his fault, though. I think he had an incident with, um, I want to say it was uh, Charles Leclerc on, off the start. We sent Charles Leclerc out. In my mind, that was 100% Charles Leclerc's fault, basically. Stroll had nowhere to go. A um, bit of a first lap incident as well, like we see quite a bit. Um, but yeah, a great result for the green team today. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, anybody anybody who was watching that, you know, uh, you know, Team Silverstone, as, um, as, as they like to be called, um, they... Uh, yeah, they, they, uh, on paper, they had, they had, they had a good, good finish today. Because you know, because they got another podium and you know, Sol got good points. But if you if you look at what happened out on track, um, you know, on, on the final restart that that we had, mm, yeah, Alonso got Alonso got tagged and got spun um, by his uh, by his Spanish counterpart, 
And then on lap one of the whole race, um, Stroll was looking to go around the outside of, uh, it was certainly one of the Ferraris. I believe, I, I think it was Signs again because. Um, well, Alonso was ahead of him and yeah, was on the inside. Just, that's why Stroll couldn't really properly avoid Leclerc. That's, that's right, because Stroll was in the middle and he was effectively getting squeezed. It mm. reminded me a little bit of the start of Singapore 2017, you know, where Mac was in between the two Ferraris and they were all breaking and that gap was just closing. And then, yeah, Stroll, Stroll you know, t- took a little bit of a little bit of a hit there and came through unscathed. You know, unfortunately, Leclerc went out. Um, but yeah, you know, again, good points for the team. Um, they were a bit furious at the at the end. Obviously, obviously, when they both got spun out and Stroll was in the gravel on on the on the third restart. But you know, we all you know the brought the positions back and yada yada yada. And yeah, third and fourth, good result for Aston Martin. Yeah, great result for them. Solidifying their second place in the championship. They're going to have a great battle with Mercedes this year. Uh, for that spot. Um, before I mention P5, I'm going to mention that if you give us a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, we really, really appreciate that. It would help us in the rankings no end. Um, you guys have been absolutely smashing that. As you've also been smashing the subscribe button on YouTube as well, we've hit over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I am so happy to see. That is fantastic. You know, Can't thank you guys enough. I mean, you can catch the shows for qualifying and the race live on YouTube. It's the only place you can do that as well. Um, just like today's show's going out live on YouTube as well. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. That really does, that really does make a huge difference to us. Uh, so keep doing that. Um, and yeah, so uh, P5 today, Sergio Perez, Tom, I mean, we mentioned in, um, mentioned in the qualifying analysis, obviously he had a horrible day on Saturday. Uh, just well, some people saying it was his own fault. Some people saying that it was a problem with the car. I personally think it was a problem with the car. I mean, Perez is no mug. Uh, I don't think. I don't. I don't think it's particularly likely to go wide like that, like he did. I might be proven wrong with that. Who knows? But anyway, he made up for it today. P five from the back of the grid. Good result for him. Uh, definitely a great damage limitation job for him. Yeah, super result. You know, he's um. Uh, he, he's, he's st- you know, obviously started on the hards you know, with the intention of uh, of going very long. Um, made what I think would have been a very inspired move to um, to switch to mediums and back to hards, uh, which he did under the first safety car. Obviously, if we didn't know a red flag was coming, probably wouldn't have bothered. But point being, you know, it was it was a good idea. He was putting in moves, man. Um, you know, uh, today, turn nine. You know, I, I, how many sort of like moves around the Around the outside, and then there was one up the inside as well. On, um, I want to say one of the McLarens. I think it was uh, Piastri potentially. The, the, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, fair, I'm fairly certain it was. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to this, you know, sort of like tarnish what he did, but you know, that red ball is an absolute weapon, and especially when it's got DRS. So, if you know, so you you would expect to see whoever's in that second seat really making moves. Having said that, do I think if Gasly or Albon would have been in that second seat and would they have done that? I don't think so, no. Um, I think that was one of Perez's best drives in that Red Bull. I really do. Um, and again, yes, look, I know it's a super quick car and, you know, obviously he had DRS and all the rest of it. He was still flying. He was absolutely flying. And, um, and, and yeah, you know, nobody can take that away from him. He was voted F1's driver of the day. I think that's a fair result. Um you know, I think I think it's a toss up between him, uh, Lando, and for a while I was going to say um, uh, signs as well. I was going to say Leclerc, but no, no. Um, and I knew it was one of the pro <laughs> drivers. Um, yeah, I mean, Paris. You know, from P twenty to P five. You know, that's a that's a good result. You know, it's a good good finish. And yes, okay, maybe he inherited maybe sort of like two positions. Um, but you know you have to look at the drivers who DNF'd. He'd have probably passed them anyway. Aside, from, I think Russell would have easily put up the biggest fight out of the drivers who, who went out. Um, you know, I, I think he'd have got past the Williams, no problem. He'd have got past. Um, uh, so I, I would say he would have got past Ocon. I wonder if he would have passed run out of tires just by the end of the race. But also Perez is like the tire whisperer, so who knows? Point being, he's still P five. And he can take that, and 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 you know he, he can he can have a few weeks off, 
I don't think it was a mistake that he made in qualifying either. I just want to pick up on, on what you said. I think there was an issue with the car because he had the same issue in free practice. I think it was FP3 he went off. Maybe FP1, I can't remember. I didn't watch free practice because it's about 3 o'clock in the morning here in the UK. Mm. Um, but um, but after quality, when when he braked, going down into turn three and lot up and straight on, his team radio, you know, you know, he, you know, he was furious that this issue hadn't been sorted. So, you know, you can tell when a driver is like, oh, you know, you know, like the C-plus, say, oh, the car just didn't turn. You know, that's like, no, no, mate, you, you know, you, you done bad. But this was, he could, you know, you could sense it in his voice, but the way he said it, that something had been wrong with the car and it wasn't sorted. So whatever it was, they obviously sorted it and he had no issue stopping late and breaking zones today. I love a drive. Yeah, brilliant drive by him. I, I echo what you said as well. If if Gasly or Albon was in was in that car instead of it, Gasly had a very similar situation in 2019. His only race for Red Bull there, of course, he only lasted off season, <laughs> but he had a very similar situation and he finished outside the points. He was absolutely nowhere. It's not an easy track to overtake at Albon Park, despite the changes they've made in recent years. Um, now I'm finishing myself. I must be dreaming. The Claren have done it. Incredible circumstances. They got points. Both of the drivers got points. Lando Norris in sixth, Oscar Piastri in eighth. I'm not going to kid myself. It's not a return to form by any means, but even without the safety cars and the red flags, I still think they would have got some points today, Tom. It is a, it is a hugely impressive result for them compared to how dreadful they were in the opening two rounds of the season. I mean, is this it? Is, yeah, is, is, this, is this McLaren Constructors Champions confirmed? You know they're back in the I points. Think so. I think so. I think so. I, I think, so. I, I think <laughs> this is it. You, you know. I, you know. It, you know. Is this? I reckon now it's, it's going to be like the, the MP. Was it the MP four four from nineteen eighty eight where I won like pretty much every race in the season? <laughs> I, I think from here now they've just got four and off they go. No, um, no. You know, as much as you know, certainly most of us, I think, aside from Ferrari fans, would like to see that. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, they did benefit from obviously some DNFs in front of them, and then you know, you know working their way up. But um, but for, for the first time in his F1 career, granted, you know he hasn't had the best of starts. We saw Piastri get his elbows out, and we saw Piastri fighting for for a position. And given how draggy that um, that uh, McLaren looked. He put up a hell of a fight. You know, he was a uh, he was really going for it. And then Lando as well, you know, that bat batting with Hulk, who is um you know, pretty experienced driver. And that that hat is quick, to be fair. Um, you know, I did think that um the Haas, uh, sorry, that that Hulk moved under braking at one point. Um, but Lando uh no, L- L- Lando put in a great um great move on him in in the in the, in the closing laps to to take that position. And there's still an awful lot of work to be done, but um, yeah, it's just good to see McLaren finally in the points and a double points finish at that. It's fantastic to see. As a very biased McLaren fan, I am very happy to see it. And I'm also very happy to see the Constructors' Championship because McLaren are in fifth. They're ahead of Alpine. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely love that. Um, I'm, so- I'm sorry, Alpine fans. I'm going to to celebrate this because I don't think it's going to last personally. I think Alpine will come back, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. It's all about a development race, and we've got a month now to the um to the next race. So it's a long time. A lot can happen in that. Um, and let's give a mention as well to Nico Hulkenberg. Tom, he's he's had a few flashes of brilliance in qualifying the, so far this season, but today he's converted it. Uh, I think he did take some tips from Kevin Magnussen about his defending against uh, Lando Norris during that race. Very, very forceful at the very least. But good points for him today. Um, shame about K-Mag, though. I think... Um, what actually happened to K-Mag? Did he get caught up in the third, re- the second restarts crash or something? Because he's not no, what, so, he's not classified. No, so K-Mag was the one who caused the final um, red oh, flag. His, yeah, his yeah, tyre so, fell off, didn't it? Literally, yeah. So he, he was exiting turn one and, and he, he, he brushed up against the wall. You know, you know, just the the race, the racing line, effectively, and th- and the car just skinned the skinned the wall, and the tire just flew off onto the track. And then at, f- at first, I thought it was just the tire, and then when I realised that was quite a lot of carbon fibre with that, you know, they then threw the red flag. So yeah, that's happened to him. 
Um, but no, he was he was running out of the points for most of, most of the race. He was he was in that sort of battle for about twelfth. Um, you know, sort of in, in and around there. But um, no, Hulk. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's he, you know, yeah, he, he's had some good qualities, but not quite had good race results. He did convert it today, and imagine the scenes if um, you know if, if they'd have gone for the lap fifty eight finishing order where he was P4 and then Sainz got a penalty and he was P. Just imagine. But no, he still can't get a podium. Um, you know, you know, even if he does have the FIA trying to help him. So, um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like maybe P4 is as good as he's going to get and it wasn't even P4 today. Um, but um, yeah, it was, a, it, it, it was better racecraft and he was defending very... Um, not quite sure what the word is, but uh, uh, but you know, I think I think George, when you said he's he's had some tips from K from Magnuson, by defending, I think he might be right because given the way he was moving, you know, especially when he was fighting with Landon, there was one lap in particular, he um, he moved so late, you know, I, I I thought I thought he'd moved under braking to be honest, because Lando had sort of like dummied him to to the left and then. You know, and then and then committed committed to going through. I thought he'd moved under braking, to be honest, but nothing came of it. And uh, and yeah, it was uh, ultimately um, you know points finish for Haas. You know, in 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 a, in a chaotic race, um, you know it, he'll take that. And and you know, bear in mind he's still going to be a bit race rusty. So yeah, so uh, on to the next for him, and uh, hopefully came out going to. Can keep it out the wall next time round in Baku. Oh God, Baku! Yeah, there's there's not a lot of um, not a lot of room to manoeuvre around <laughs> in Baku. That is another very tight track. There's a proper street circuit and another really quick one at that too. Um, but yeah, great great result for Hulk. Great result for for Haas as well. They needed that. They absolutely needed that. That's a huge one for them. Um, a big one as well for Guan Yu Zhou. Um, he was absolutely nowhere. The Alfa Romeos were having an awful race this race, especially Valtteri Bottas. Bottas did finish just outside the points in P11. I do feel for him, but at the same time, most of the way through that race, he was miles off. Alfa looked awful this race, Tom, but they still get two points to take home, so that is something for them. Yeah, I mean, you know, they... they... They weren't, you know, they, they they were not looking particularly quick, and they were they, they didn't have much race pace at all. Um, ultimately, they you know they, they did they did manage to get get in, into the points, you know, helped by you know the two Alpines taking each other out. They weren't going to get their own merit today, and you know I think um, I think Alfa Romeo need to you know need to do a lot of work to to get that car to where it should be. Um, Bottas, uh, yeah, as, as much as I like him and as much as he's like Australia's adopted son, he's not really performed this year so far. You know, he's uh, you know, he, he was plum last in qualifying of the drivers who who, who took part in qualifying, so obviously Perez crashed out. Um, yeah, not good from them. Um, and you know, I, I think it's safe to say that we all want to see more from them. They're, they're sort of they're sort of like in no man's land at the minute. And uh, you know, and, and and we just we just need to see, just need some more from them. Yeah, we do. They're 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 not they're not doing a hell of a lot this season. Not really pulling pulling up any trees. Uh, despite the eighth place that Bottas got in the opening round of the season, they're very much not looking like best of the rest. Uh, despite that, but I think they'll just be. I think Alfa Romeo will be reluctant to invest in the team because they're obviously leaving after this season, and then Audi are coming in two thousand and twenty six. So they're in a bit of a limbo state at the moment. They're just kind of coasting towards that, really, where the real big investment will come for them. Um, but that's obviously a long way away. That's a whole three seasons away. That's a that's a ways away. Um, yeah, I gave a mention to um, gave a mention to Oscar Piastri getting ninth place in his home race. That's huge for him. I'm really happy for him because of that. Um, tenth place, and with the first point of this season for Alpha Tauri today, Tom Yuki Sonoda had. I think he, I think he had a decent race today. Not the best car. Uh, De Vries was not really having a good race. I think he was at blamed for the incident with him and Ocon earlier on, and I think he got caught up in the absolute chaos of the second restart too. So. Not not bad for Alpha Tauri. Could have been better, of course, but you know, at least they got a point on the board now this season. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, you, I, th- I think De Vries is certainly struggling a bit at the, at the moment. You know, it's, it's, take, it's taking him a while to sort of get used to F1 um, and he's not really doing himself any favours. Sonoda, you, you know, he, he, he crossed the line P11, but then mo- moved up to P10 with, um, you know, with, with Sainz's penalty. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> again, you know, you know, it's like, we just need to see more from AlphaTauri because they've had an awful start to the season. You know, they've really struggled for, for race pace. I think this is their, it's only the second time they scored points. Um, and then, and you know, and even then it's only a point. Um, I mean, you know, De Vries just looks a bit out of his depth. Granted, we're, we're only a few races in, but, you know, you know, we've got Baku coming up and, you know, you know, I, there's going to need to be um, there's going to need to be some some serious improvement in both the car and the drivers. You know, Sonoda was putting in good battles, but you know, he, he only got P10 because of signs of penalty. It, you know, it's uh, you know, with you know, with with Helmut Marko sort of like looming over the team, and then you know, all, all the rumors that are coming out, um, you know, about the team relocating to the UK or you know, potentially you know. Alpha Terry getting sold, and you know the, the management structure that's been put in place since um, since um, Matashit's passed away last year. You know, it's just a, it just seems like a bit of a, a bit, the whole Red Bull setup at the minute just seems like a bit of a bit of a sort of unhappy camp. Um, but, you know, it, and then it, that's never going to reflect well on you know on um, on drivers who who are who are. You know, obviously out there on track. I mean, <laughs> I like the Vries. You know, he, he seems seems like a cool guy, but we need to see a lot more from him in, in F one. You know, so uh, you know, if he's going to stick around, and Sonoda, Sonoda, you know, he's just he's just like a walking meme by this point. Um, oh yeah, again, like, you know, like like I said, he he was he was put he put in good battles, but. I just feel like that team is just carrying on going backwards. It's not looking too amazing for them, and you're right. It is a it is concerning when I mean I per, speak from personal experience when when you're in a job and you don't know what's happening. You know something's wrong. You know something's not quite working. There's something's happening behind the scenes, and it just it just breeds uncertainty and and paranoia. And it's not what you want. And, and you're right. I think. I think it is potential. You know, Alpha, uh, sorry, Alpha Tower could potentially get uh, sold. It would not surprise me at all if Red Bull want to just focus on one team on the grid, like everybody else does. They're the only ones that have two teams outright like that. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, first points of the season for Alpha Tower, though, but that's, that's positive. But in terms of the pace overall, it's not looking too much better than last year, and last year was really bad for them. Um, speaking of really bad today, Ferrari. Oh my days. So obviously we've mentioned Charles Leclerc. He he had the he had the incident in the first first lap. We were saying that the guy needs a break. He did not get one. Um he just basically turned in on Lance Stroll. Probably didn't know that Lance Stroll couldn't turn in himself because of Alonso being there. It's a very difficult one that when you got three wide and you're and you're the guy on the outside. It's very difficult to judge. So I feel for him in that sense. Um and Carlos signed 100 percent to blame, in my opinion, for um uh, for for what happened to him at the restart when he had the contact with um I think it was was it Pierre I'm trying to remember who it was now Fernando Alonso sorry my apologies I've actually got my grid talk notebook because there was that much going on at the restart I don't do notes ever for preparation on on these shows I'll be honest with you today I'm making it exceptional because so much happened but yeah he was hundred percent to blame for the what happened to him with an Alonso um deservedly got that five second penalty and obviously. Because of that, despite crossing the line in in fourth or fifth, he ended up classifying last of the runners, Tom. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think he had a point that they should have probably left that until after the race to discuss it with him. I can see why he was so fuming, but I think there's only one person to blame in that crash. Oh yeah, um, you know it's uh, it, it, it was it was it, it was his fault at, at the start. You know he he he, he fully clipped. Um, stroll and you know pitched him off. You, you know that there's there's no doubting that um you know that uh, that you know that um signs was to blame. Um, I'll cover Fry quickly. Uh, you, I mean you just summarised it perfectly. You know, just a weekend. To, well, you know, it's only a Sunday to forget. Um, you know, 
Leclerc out by turn three um, was a racing instant. Maybe should have been a bit more careful, but you know he, he was he was going into a gap that was always going to close. Um, you know, and then you know Sainz just was driving so well, but then you know on, on that final restart got you know got got it wrong. Um, we I'm going to get into it. We saw him remonstrating on TV. Uh, you know, and then we heard some, some of the team radio where he was going back to his engineer, Ricky, you know, saying, you know, you, you, you need to, you, know, you need to fight this, you need to make it right. You know, whatever. <laughs> the FIA have just had done themselves today, mate, honestly. Um, tell me, how on earth can you give a penalty to a driver when that lap is null and void? We didn't even complete the lap. We didn't even we didn't even finish the first sector. The red flag was out before a car crossed the sec the first sector timing line, which means anything that happens on that lap is just put you you know you go back and restart and you then have the other fiasco which we had of going oh, is lap fifty eight is lap fifty seven you start where do I start P four do I start P five he's how can I get on the podium what day of the week is it I don't know is my is my auntie my uncle who knows um, you know and then so how can how can they give a penalty to a driver on a lap that hasn't happened because you know because they can say ah. We give you five second penalty for lap fifty. Oh, hang on a minute, you know, because because if they're going to say lap fifty eight, well, lap fifty eight, according to the time sheet, was behind the safety car because they went round and completed completed the lap because lap fifty eight was when we had the rolling restart to finish the race. So tell me, where in the timing sheets that happened? You know, it's just it's just the FIA yet again, just getting you know, just. I don't think it's the FIA. Well, you know, obviously it is the FIA because they're the ones who are in charge of this kind of thing. But there are so many rules and regulations and different wordings and you know, gentlemen's agreements and the disagreement, that agreement, that things just get so muddled up. And there needs to be just like this big wipe of everything takes the core values of what makes F1 F1. I'll talk about the sporting regulations, by the way, um, not the technical regulations. I'm not clever enough to do that. Um, I leave that to all the boffins. Um, but you know, the sporting regulations, you know, you have regulations that contradict each other, ones that override each other, ones that, you know, if if you're racing anti-clockwise, you know, <laughs> you know, you might get a benefit over a different rule. It just needs to be scrapped, it needs to be flattened, and they just need to sit down and rewrite the rules. I know that's not an easy task. That's a laborious task. That's a long task that needs a lot of input from drivers and team principals and you know teams and everybody involved, you know, circuits, whoever. It needs to be done because we're seeing so many things crop up now. It's like the whole not not you know not uh, uh, team members not going through the fence and cheering when drivers you know cross the line. How many years have we seen people doing that? And then also. Um, Hamilton with the jewelry thing last year. I'm not a Hamilton fan, but you know, did they drag that one out? Um, and does Hamilton still wear jewelry? Yes. You know, d- does Gassi wear jewelry? Yes. Do other drivers wear you know, wear things? Yes. You know, so I get that we need to enforce all the rules, but you can't just suddenly start saying, okay, well, we're now going to start enforcing this rule. Because once you set a precedent, that's it. And, 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 you know, a precedent does carry some sort of weight with it. You know, you know, you know, it's just, it was just an absolute, I can't use that word. It, it, it was, it was an absolute mess. You know what I was going to say. It was an absolute mess uh, at the end of the race today. And the whole sort of like negotiation, well, not negotiation, but the whole sort of like going back and forth, back and forth, just like, you know, are we starting on this lap? Are we starting on that lap? Karun Chandok made a good point in the commentary. He said he'd been reading for 10 minutes. He was on page 53 and he still couldn't find anything to do with a safety car restart that was relevant. And it was a fact that Ted Kravitz said, or I think it was Crofty, said there are four possible outcomes. It's like, it shouldn't be like that. It's like, if we haven't crossed sector one, you roll back to the previous lap. It shouldn't have taken that long. Sainz shouldn't have got a penalty, but he did. Ocon and Gasly have both been summoned to the stewards. So I reckon Garcia will get a penalty. He shouldn't because that lap didn't happen. But 
oh, it's just what I'm, I'm, I'm going on, unless it's probably going to get clipped or something. But I, f- I feel I had to say this because it was just an absolute mess from top to bottom. Both the drivers, who are supposed to be professional drivers, I chatting to my mate on Instagram watching the game, uh, watching the match. She, she's an out, she's a Red Bull and you know an F one fan. She, you know, she, 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 she's, you know, she, she said to me, you know, these lot are supposed to be professional drivers, and she put it in, you know, in quotations. You know, it was just, it was just embarrassing from, you know, from from top to. It's, it's supposed to be the pinnacle of motorsport, the pinnacle of single seaters, the twenty best drivers in single seaters, and they do rubbish like that. Come on, we're better than ours as well. I agree. <laughs> no, no, no. In all, in all seriousness, uh, yeah, I think you're echoing a lot of the sentiments of a lot of the F1 fans who have been around for a while. It, it's an absolute mess. I think what, um, I think what sums it up for me most is is uh, Saudi Arabia a couple of weeks ago, where the stewards took pretty much the entire race to make one decision. And they got it wrong. <laughs> so yeah, th- there needs to be a big, big overhaul of things. Um, if the rule book really is that long, then they need to streamline it because it's just too damn complicated. That's probably why it's taken so long to make decisions because they're just like we need to read through absolute reams and reams of paper just to even find what's relevant. And it shouldn't be like that. It should not be like that at all. But it is it is what Formula One is. Uh, and we need to do something about it. Absolutely. We can complain about it all, all we want here, though. But the FAA have got to do something. Um, so, yeah. So, speaking of messes, though, Alpine. Um, we've, we've, we have more than touched on the fact that, I mean, we have we have hinted it at it throughout the whole the whole season, even last season after it got uh, after it got announced. They finally collided after it's only taken three races. Ocon and Gasly have crashed. Um, I've just seen the quotes after the race. I think Gasly has declined to comment on what happened <laughs> or at the restart, probably because of repercussions within the team. But Tom, oh my God, Gasly for me was doing an incredible job today. He was in P4. Yeah, he kind of looked into it a little bit but still. He was holding that place. And then at the final, re- uh, the second restart, it just all goes to pot. Um, Ocon runs back onto the track, I think, and then just hits into Gasly or the other way around. And because of that, Alpine leave Australia pointless when it could have and should have been so much more for them. Oh, man, where do we begin? So, Alpine, good job, guys. Nobody saw this coming at all. You know, these these two coming to a head. Oh, God, nobody saw it coming. Hmm. Blimey, Um... Yeah, I mean, Gasly was running a really good race. You know, he qualified pretty well eventually, um, and then yeah, he you know he was he was running P four and then you know, and then I think dropped back to possibly P five, um, but you know he was holding off Stroll in that Aston, which is you know because you know, that Aston is quick, but the Alpine was looking proper quick. Side note, I just want to shout out something that I said in Slack. I never thought I'd see the day where a Renault power engine has been the most reliable so far in a season. Because we've seen a Mercedes <laughs> power unit completely to itself. Ferrari already, you know, having to take grid penalties for um uh, for Leclerc because they used all the control electronics after the first race. Um, and then obviously Max had the drivetrain issue in um in Saudi Arabia. You know, so I'll be, you know, unless they have, unless they haven't said anything, um, you know, in which case, just good job. Um, you, you know, if that given how unreliable the power units have been in the past, you know, you know they haven't had any issues yet, and for three races in, that's pretty good for Alpine. But that's about where the good stuff ends this weekend, because oh boy, wow. Okay, right, Gasly, what on earth were you doing? <laughs> Rule number one of F1, you never, ever hit your teammate. And, uh, you know, just the, the way he came back on the grid, that's uh, right, back on the grid, the way the way he came back on the track, he, he should have just anticipated a driver sort of coming around the outside because, you know, because let's be fair, you know, we do it when we, when we play the F1 game, let alone, you know, Drivers who do it on a track in real life. If someone goes off, it's their responsibility to join the track safely. And he didn't do that at all. Of course, he put his blimmin' teammate in the wall and took them both out. 
you know, and he ruined what was going to be a really good double points finish for the team. It would have been his best result for Alpine by a country mile. And you know, I know he's only been there. To, I know this is only a third race, but you know, he just just made such a stupid error. And you know, to 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 wipe out his teammate, who you know they have a fractious history at the best of times. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would not want to be sharing a flight home with those two. And I, and just 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 to like pick up on what I said earlier, um, if they're going to give signs of penalty, which they have done, which they shouldn't have done, but which they have done. They have to look at that. Well, they are looking at that guy's instant because both Alpine drivers have been summoned to the Stewarts. And given it was Gasly who went off and caused the collision in the first place, if he gets a um if he gets like a proper penalty, and if he gets penalty points, he's out the next race. You, you know, there's a chance he will not be racing in Baku. Um yeah, two penalty points and he hits 12, doesn't he? So he yep. gets the race ban. So I think given how dangerous it was when he, when he rejoined the track like that, it's it's possible. It's it's bloody possible. There's no decision at the moment. I'm just looking at the BBC live commentary. There's no, uh, as we record this, there's no decision on that. But I think at minimum he's going to get at least a point and a grid penalty. He must do for that. I, I, I reckon that's going to be, um, if he gets found at fault, which he should, uh, I think that's going to be... I would say three penalty points and and a, and a grip position drop. So that'll be him. That'll be him out of Baku. And then what's what's after Baku? Is it? It's not Canada, is it? I think it's Miami. Miami, yeah. So he'll probably take a grid drop for them for for Miami as well. Um, you know, all all because he didn't join the track safely, and he's undone such. So you know, he's sorry, he's done all the hard work that he had done himself, and it's just oh man, he, he you know there's just it's, there's just no excuse for doing that. You know he's not a rookie; he's been on the grids in some capacity since 2017. He did a few races at the tail end for Toro Rosso, and then and then you know you know he's been on the grid in a full time capacity since 2018. This is his fifth. You no. Know, Sixth full season, um, no fifth. Um, sixth full season. Is it? I'll take a word for it, mate. I just want to go back to bed. To be honest, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah, the point being, he's been on the grid for quite a while, and he really, you know, you would think that he knows better. Um, so, oh man, it's just. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's just not a good look for them. And Otmar's going to be tamping, rightly so. Um, Ocon's going to be tamping. Gaz is probably going to be tamping. And it's just, you know, if you think about all the people back in back in um, Endstone who've been putting in all that good work for for the team, you, you know, all, all, and then you know, there's going to be a big repair bill and all the rest of it. It's uh, it's not what they needed. It's you know, far, far, far from what they needed, and just, uh, yeah, wow, yeah, it's it's definitely an implosion on a mass scale for <laughs> for for Alpine this weekend. Awful for them. Great, like I like I mentioned before, great for my team McLaren, but awful for the Alpine fans out there. That is that is not good, and the fallout of it could potentially continue. Obviously, like you said, with a race ban potentially for Pierre Gasly um, uh, for his, for his penalty points. Um, got to mention as well, Williams. Uh, I mean, uh, Logan Logan Sargent did not have a good weekend this weekend. He was absolutely anonymous and eventually got caught up in that in that second restart. But Alexander Albon had a hell of a qualifying qualifying in the top ten and was running in P six and then he binned it. I felt for him so much. Just a pure mistake out of the race early on. I think that was the first red flag. Damaged the barriers with it. I feel for him and Williams. That is awful. Um, but. But yeah, uh, those are the 10 teams and the 20 drivers. We've gone through them all there. Um, I will mention that if the Grid Talk is available on YouTube, where pretty much all the episodes for qualifying and the race uh, reviews are recorded live, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, 
Point and Pocket Cast. Just search for Grid Talk on all of those to go for our back catalogue of shows. We've hit over 250 shows now. We're going to be hitting probably 400 by um, by the end of the season, which is huge. Um, and yeah, and if you are a Sky Q or a Sky Glass customer in the UK, you can find us on the Fallen One podcast sa- section in all of those too, which is great. You can watch it on your TV. It's so easy. Um, Tom, I've mentioned earlier on that you are part of the Fallen One Talk podcast. Um, I, I was on there uh, this week to preview Australia as well with Sophia. It's a great show and it covers a lot of the other series that support Formula One that, that we don't cover on the main show here. Yeah, so um so Sophia had the um is the sort of like brainchild and she's the um you know she's the sort of like genesis but behind Formula Talk. But yes, it covers off um uh it, it covers off anything uh F two, F three. You know, we're starting to look at Formula One Academy. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's it's a really good show, and you know, it's um, it's 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 really growing, and Sophia especially is is doing it is is doing really really well. So uh, yeah, that that show, you know, obviously, obviously I'm biased, but it, it is well worth a listen. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's nice nice to talk about something with sport, but also something that's not. F one, um, you know, because you know, because obviously we we talk we talk a lot about F one, but um, but you know, it's it's, not, it's nice to look at the um, it's not nice to look at some of the uh, some of the support series as well. So yeah, um, you you can catch that on um, uh, on everywhere that everywhere that you can find uh, good talk. Just um, if you just look through the episodes, you'll see form the talk in there as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great show. I, I really enjoyed being on it and we're going to get some more of the regular Grid Talk people on it as well going through the season. It's the best place to go to catch everything that happens in F2 and F3. Because if you're like me, you couldn't catch it live because it's in the middle of the night this weekend. But that's not a normal occurrence. I do normally watch it when it's live. Um, and yeah, and please consider supporting us over on Patreon as well so that we can get my, better mics, lights and recording equipment as well as our shop as well. Uh, F1, f1chronicle.com forward slash store uh, you can get things like these these fan club mugs the, the notepad that i very shamelessly plugged earlier on the one that tom's got every host has got a fan club one and as well we've got one for my main man philip matthews as well who's not on this weekend because the, the race was on at like 1 a.m his time uh, but he's a regular on the show as well so yeah just if you want to go support us that way do it you get some great merchandise out of it as well it's some really good stuff um, and as well, you can head over to our Facebook and our Twitter as well. We're at F1 Chronicle on Twitter if you want to give us some opinions on anything. If you want to give us some suggestions for merchandise as well, we're open to that as well. If you've got any ideas for that, let us know. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming on this weekend, uh, Tom. Very much appreciated as always. My pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely great. And yes, we will be back soon. It's another month to the, to the race, uh, the next race in Azerbaijan, but... We'll be uh, providing some content in the meantime, not least Formula Talk as well in a couple of days' time. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching and listening, everybody, and goodbye.